Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, please. I just titled this, When I See the Blood. I think you heard it in the music this morning, the worship, on the, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. Father, again, it's a privilege to be in your house. I thank you for this honor of being here covered and washed in the blood of the Lamb. I pray that if there's one person here that's not saved, that today would be the day you save them. If there's people here that have been saved, but this morning they're living in willful sin, in disobedience, and they're out from under your blood, oh God, let the anointing and the conviction of the Holy Ghost bring them back under that conviction, bring them to that place of repentance and applying and the washing of the blood of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land, in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. They shall take of the blood, strike it on the two side posts and on the upper doorpost of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it eat not of it raw nor sodden or boiled at all with water but roast with fire his head and his legs and with the pertinence thereof you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning and that which remaineth of it until the morning you shall burn with fire and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, that means your clothes on, your shoes on your feet, staff in your hands, you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the Lord and the blood shall be to you for a token or a sign upon the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, this day shall be unto you for a memorial. You shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Amen. Well, we all know, I think, probably most of us or all of us, why that God would have this, them apply the blood to their doorpost, a type, a shadow of what was to come. I don't think any of us have to be told or explained again. There's a lot in this message that I will skip only for sake of time. And for the other part is I believe you understand a lot of it in this Old Testament type and shadow. But the Passover was a holiday. It was celebrated by Israel to remind them of their deliverance from Egypt. The Israelites knew that to be spared from a plague of death, a lamb 
with no defects had to be killed and its blood put on those doorposts of every house. This was saying to them that a lamb was their sacrifice, a substitute for the person who would have, who would have died in the plague. That lamb is going to take the place of the firstborn of every house. If that lamb is killed, according to God's word, and that blood's applied to that doorpost, then that substitute will be the, the one that dies in the place of the person that should have died in the plague. This, this taught Israel then for them to be spared from death, that an innocent life had to be sacrificed in their place. An innocent life died in their place. If there was no blood on that doorpost, when that death angel passed through that land, then that, that firstborn son of every home and animal as well, every family had to die. If that blood's not on that doorpost, the lamb had to be killed, church, in order to get the, the blood that would protect them. Without that lamb dying, without obedience to God's word, then every firstborn of that home would die. Even though Israel was not free from bondage of Egypt yet, they were to obey God by celebrating this Passover with all that of the order of God, the roasted lamb, the unleavened bread, the, the bitter herbs. They all mean something. Won't take time to detail it, but they all, in that order, God told them, eating that Passover feast while wearing traveling clothes on them, every one of them, was only a sign of their faith, only a sign of their obedience. They were prepared for God to deliver them and to take them out of Egypt. Preparation is always an act of faith, preparing ourselves for the fulfillment of God's word, saints, in our life demonstrates our faith. We must realize faith and obedience are inseparable. Don't tell me you have faith if you live a life of disobedience. That is not true. Obedience is faith. And obedience to the word of God is that I believe that what God said he will do. Jesus left this earth. He said, I'm going to the Father. I will prepare a place for you. And I, when I, I will come again. And I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. John 14, 1 through 6. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Then he tells us what it takes, what it costs, how to get to that place. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He's not just going to tell you that there's a place called heaven, a place prepared for you and I, but he's going to tell us then, now, how do I get there? What's the requirement? Why? Because it's God's word. And if God's word said that this is the way, the truth, and the life, there is no other way to come another way or try to get to heaven. Another way is to be a thief and a robber. So I have to be obedient to the word of God if I'm going to get what God said is mine in this book. Whatever God's word says, if you and I will live in obedience to it, then that word will work in our life. The enemy knew who belonged to God by the obedience of what Moses commanded them to do. When I pass through the land where I see the blood, I will pass over. When I see the blood, the destroying angel says, I'll look for the blood. There's no question. Didn't have to knock on the door and say, Brother Roy, did you obey the word of God? No, sir. He come through that land. He looked at that house. He sees the blood on the doorpost. He sees it on the sides. 
sees it all the way over. He just moves right on. He looks for the Mesquez house. He sees the bloods applied, the Stecker house, the Downs, the Frias, whoever. He looks. He just sees the blood. You don't knock on the door and argue about nothing. He just says, when I see the blood, then I know you're in obedience to God. He could not harm or touch a house that had the blood of that land without a blemish applied to it. Church, we are born, we know that, in sin, shapen in iniquity. We're a total blemish until the blood of Jesus is applied to our life. I love what Brother Clendenin preached, but one of the things he said there in, in Florida, something I'd never heard him say, he said, we don't have to argue with nobody. He said, and the reprobates, the atheists, or no one else. He said, this ain't an argument. You don't have to argue with nobody. He said, everything that it is will prove itself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have to argue with nobody. I know in whom I have believed. I am persuaded that he is able to keep me to, to that very day that he has appointed me to. I know that. I am convinced of that. I don't have to ask my wife, do you think I'm saved? If you have to ask somebody if you're saved, you're not. You hearing me? So there's no argument. People can argue all they want. The argument is settled by in its own proof. This gospel will prove itself. If you're washed in the blood, covered by the blood, it will take care of itself. It will prove itself. Coming up this road, not far down the road, this nation is going to go through the worst devastation and attack it's ever faced. Unbelievable economically and racial and all the disturbance. This nation probably will come to martial law. But there will be a people in the heart of the disaster, in the heart of the trauma and the trial and the pain that's washed in the blood of the lamb covered by the blood of the lamb not afraid to go to walmart not afraid to walk out at night why because i trust the blood of jesus christ we're coming to a place saints of god we're gonna find out do you believe in the blood of jesus christ and if you don't, you're going to find yourself destroyed. This blood has to be applied. God knows who belongs to him. He sees his son's blood has been applied. Isn't that wonderful? Aren't you glad God doesn't have to come stop? Say, Ryan, are, are you saved? Uh-uh. No, no, no. He doesn't have to ask one question. Jackie, are you saved? No, Chris, are you saved? Marissa, are you saved? Mary, Brother Nick, are you saved? No, sir. He looks, he says, Ooh, see my son's blood. Wow, see my son's blood. I see my son's blood. I see my son's blood. Let me tell you something. In the natural, this man cannot deny that's his daughter. She looks too much like him. Hello. Kirk cannot deny Jared's not his boy. Too much like him. Hello? And if I'm covered, washed in the blood of the Lamb, nobody can deny it. I can't deny it because the blood has made me too much like him. Washed in the blood. When he sees you, sees me, he sees his son's blood. My God. You realize not everybody that says they're Christians are Christians? Only those that God's approved of, that His Son's blood has totally washed their sins away and been applied to their life. God knows then them are His, who are His. When you and I were born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, we now are the temple of God. This is what Paul meant when he said in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Question. Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, 
which you have of God, and you are not your own question. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Why? Washed in the blood, covered by the blood. I'm no longer my own. I've been bought with a price. I'll prove it when the bucket goes by. I'll prove it when they have a church service. I'll prove it when they have an altar call. I'll prove it at a prayer meeting that my body is washed in the blood. My spirit is not mine. It's his. My body's not mine. It's his. He bought me at Calvary. Your body, my body, now is the temple of the Holy Ghost. A man that won't come to church, won't pay his tithe, won't be faithful to prayer meeting, is not bought with that price. Why? There's no blood been applied. Well, that's just your opinion. No, that's God's opinion. Know you not? I bought you with a price. You're no longer your own. St. Paul said, Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, just your everyday service. I'm not my own. When I get up in the morning, what do I want to do today? Especially Sunday. Good day to go fishing. Good day to go to the park. Good day to go to the beach. Good day to do what I want to do. Wait a minute. I'm not my own. I belong to somebody now. What? Question. Know you not that your body? Wherefore I beseech you. I beg you. Give me your body. A living sacrifice. Holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God is. What am I talking about? Washed in the blood, forgiven of my sins, covered by the blood. I'm no longer my own. I belong to somebody else. I no longer have driven by my own will and desires. Every day of my life has to be renewed in the spirit. No, God, not my will, but thy will be done. Saints of God, all the blood applying, all the blood preparing must be now. Please understand me. It's got to be now. When Jesus cleansed that temple in Mark 11, so it what? So it could become a house of purity, a house of prayer, a house of power, and a house of praise. Church, we have become that house covered by and with his blood. We are now the temple of God. I'm not my own. You're not your own. When God looks at his church, all he sees is Jesus. Church, he never has any problem knowing who his church is or who his body is. Like I said earlier, he just looks for his son's blood. See, he doesn't look at your necklace or your license, uh, your bumper sticker. No, no. He looks at you. He looks at me. And he looks for his son's blood. Has that blood been applied? Has that blood, is it a living thing over my life today? Is it over the doorpost of this house? Am I washed and covered by the blood? Let me tell you something, church. Don't 
fake it. Don't act it out. Don't play some religious game of some kind of a, re a religious imitation that walks around acting like you're some kind of a Christian and a dedicated person that you're not because if there's no blood there, look out. I know where we're heading. I'm telling you, as sure as there's a God in heaven, any church, any willful sin or disobedience will move us out from under the blood. And anything not under the blood, the enemy can destroy at his will. That's why if I have a problem or run in with somebody, I get it right immediately. Don't harbor it. Don't go to bed with it. Don't try to convince yourself that you're right and that somebody did you dirty or wrong. No, sir, if you got, you know, somebody's got on against you or you got on against somebody else, get it right. Don't go to bed tonight. Don't leave this service. Why? I would not want to walk out into that parking lot today without the blood of Jesus Christ covering my mind, my body. I don't know what's going to happen by tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but I do know one thing. Dave Maffei, if the blood has covered, you may end up in heaven tomorrow. But if the blood's not there, you'll end up in hell tomorrow. We must realize... That this blood's a serious thing. Washed in the blood. Covered by the blood. Sometimes people will ask, if this is true, then when, when people are out of his will, by disobedience and sin, why do they not get shot down by Satan? I get that asked a lot. How come, if they're not under the blood, why didn't Satan take them out? Watch this. Because Satan knows, church, he's got them right where he wants them. He can do more damage to the body of Christ by allowing them to continue in their sin and disobedience. The longer you hear this preacher, the longer you get by, the worse the, pr the price is going to be when you pay. I got a call last week before I left to go to Florida that a man that attend this church preached and taught in our church, worked the altars, prayed people through to the Holy Ghost, walked away, and it, over a time, a period of time, whatever happened, happened. But he died, and they called us and told us he died in a car wreck, drunk. What happened? Who knows how long or how many times he lived out from under the blood. And Satan didn't do a thing. Didn't touch the man's life. Why? You can do more damage in a church by sitting here in willful sin and disobedience by far than you can if you just knock them out. So he knows any second, any time, I can take the person out, but I'd rather keep them here so they think he's getting by with it. And what he's preaching is null and void, nothing but a bunch of threats. So if nothing ever happens, I have the biggest house, the most money, everything's going just fine. Nothing he said has ever happened. I haven't been to all the services. I haven't been to no prayer meetings. Don't put a quarter in the bucket. Nothing's happened to me. Just wait. Just wait. He got by. And he got by, and he got by. Worst thing I could have ever heard is for a reliable source to call me and say, the unthinkable is what happened. He was drinking when he crashed that car and never knew what hit him as he went into eternity. Are you listening to me? And the worst thing you can do is believe in eternal security. Because the minute you die, 
Close those eyes in death. Satan is standing there in your face saying, you're a fool. You believe the lie of the ages that once saved, always saved. No, sir. You were, you were caught as a man is when he dies as a tree falls, so shall it lie. He that is a, a whoremonger will die. A whoremonger if they die at that time. A drug addict, a drug addict. Whatever it is, you shoot up and go on a fix and go on some kind of a high and you die in your sin you'll split hell wide open don't let nobody tell you any different so some people they get by and they get by and they get by and they get by and it seems like that everything we say preach and teach is just fallen by the wayside let me tell you something church the devil knows he can gun them down anytime he wants are you hearing me He's, his allowing them to get by seemingly makes others feel like if nothing happened to them, then why can't I do that? God is long-suffering for one thing, saints, for them. And then there may be also somebody's praying desperately for that person. Are you hearing me? Brother Roy, I'd be in hell if it wasn't for Dave and Irene. And family members that travailed with God to get me back to God. I wouldn't be in this pulpit. I'd be in hell. But somebody prayed and somebody intercede. What am I saying? There's some people that are making a mockery about living outside and out from under the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't want them to die drunk. I don't want to die lost. So I'm not going to give in, give up. I'm going to pray and intercede for them. Oh God. God have mercy. God have mercy. Don't take them while they're lost. Oh God, deal with them. Deal with them. Convict them tonight. Don't let them sleep. Don't let them go to hell. Oh God, don't let them go to hell. If you not stop praying, I believe God will arrest them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there's some that get by and it seems like they're making a mockery of it. Let me tell you something. Somebody, no doubt, is praying for you. We must be very careful how we treat our body. Number two, we must be very careful how we treat his body. This is Tom and Terry Kelly. Pierre and Mona. My brothers and sisters in this church. But they are also... The body of Christ. Be careful how you treat your body. And be careful how you treat his body. This is his body. They are washed in the blood of the Lamb. They belong to Christ. Am I making any sense? The Bible said if you defile, defile that temple, God will destroy you. Don't let down your protection by allowing the blood to be removed. Satan cannot cross the bloodline. We allow him in by our disobedience and our willful sin. God said he would rebuke the devourer for our sakes. Whose? The obedient. This church is why he had to get permission to attack Job. There's a hedge around him. He's a man of obedience to the word of God. Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Yes. I've been to his farm. I've been to his house. I've been everywhere about him. But you got a hedge around him. Are you hearing me, church? Satan is dogging your trail. He desires you to sift you as wheat. But I am praying for you that your faith fell not. What am I saying? As long as that hedge is there, Satan said, I'd love to smear you and wipe you out. But I see the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't you dare discount the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. It didn't just come along to wash away some little bad thought or some little, some little tip, tip, tiptoe to the tulips 
kind of sin. No, sir. His one drop of his blood will paralyze hell as it delivers a drunk, a drug addict, a murderer, a, a person of the lowest kind and the lowest state. One drop of the blood of Jesus Christ is enough to paralyze Satan and all of hell. Are you kidding me? To see one drop of blood on a child of God. Satan says, I wish, I wish, I wish, but I can't. Why? The blood of Jesus Christ. No, we can't see it. But by faith, we trust it. The children of Israel couldn't see the blood on the doorpost and on the side post. Why? They're in the house. You can't come out and say, Abby, did you put the blood on the doorpost? Because the angel may have come through while you're outside and he'd die by the death stroke of the plague. When I come through the land, I'm looking for the blood. Hallelujah. I must stay in the house and trust this blood. Have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Every sin you've ever committed, sir, man, every sin you've ever committed, if you truly repented, then God has truly forgiven and the blood has been applied to it. Some of you have had abortions, but God Almighty looks at you and sees his son's blood, not the abortion. Only the accuser of the brethren will try to convince you that blood has not been applied. It has been applied. And God doesn't see you as an abortionist. God doesn't see you as a murderer. He sees you as his child, washed in the blood of the Lamb. There may have been some heinous crimes that you and I have committed in the past. Painful. We think of them sometimes. Makes me sick to think what kind of a human being I could have been. But I look back, Brother Nick, and I look at the blood that's been applied to my life to my past and when God sees me sees you he sees his son's blood hide yourself in the house the blood has been applied how important this is in this closing hour that we're washed and covered by the blood Satan cannot cross that bloodline you cannot cover anyone now listen to me you cannot cover anyone, including family members, that are not believers with the blood. Except children that are not accountable yet. If they're not at an age accountability, you can cover them with the blood. But if you've got kids in your home, or that you've raised, in their teenage years, or young adult age, rebelling against God... Living in willful sin, you cannot cover them with the blood. Don't get mad at me. The blood is only applied to the repentant person. When repentance is given, then the blood is applied. Disobedience and sin takes me, I don't care who I am, who you are, out from under the blood. I don't care if you're the greatest preacher, soul winner that ever lived. Willful sin. Brother Shute told us a story while he was preaching there in Florida. Preacher told him about it this, just these last few months. A man preached in that pulpit, said it was the most unbelievable, convicting message under the power of the Holy Ghost you ever heard. He said, I'm telling you, Brother Schutz, it was awesome. Said and that man preached and preached and said it was unbelievable, the power and the anointing of God on his life. The next day they couldn't find him. And he, he was wanting to get him back to, for that next service. They couldn't find him. They went looking for him. They found him in his car. He committed suicide. Something, something was working stronger 
than what he was saying. You can act a part. You can talk a part. And not be that. And move yourselves out from under that blood. And there's no way you can cover with the blood that has not repented. If you could, the whole world would be saved. Because when Jesus died on Calvary, he shed his blood for an entire world to be saved. But that did not save them. They have to come by the way of the blood, through the way of repentance, hearing the gospel preached, and having a confession of, of forgiveness and repentance. And through that, then the blood of the cross can be applied to that life. But parents, grandparents, hear this preacher. You cannot cover with the blood what is willfully living out in sin. You cannot. You can pray that God will save them and that God will arrest them and that God won't let them die in their sin. And we should pray that. We should believe that. But don't be a fool thinking because you covered your son with the blood that on his way to work stopped and had a couple beers and died and you think he's in heaven. What a lie! This blood is only applied to true repentance. Everything is based on the abiding in Christ. John 15, 7 said, Jesus said, If you abide in me, my words abide in you. You can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you or for you. When? Abiding. Psalms 91, 1 said, he that dwelleth, E-T-H, dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Are you hearing me, church? It is all based on our abiding. If we're not abiding, then there's no blood applied you must hear me. I don't know why God wants me to preach this. I think there must be something very shortly coming up the road that's going to test our nation, the church in our nation, whether or not it's covered by the blood. Is this church covered by the blood? Is this preacher covered? Covered by the blood. As I said to you, Satan cannot touch Job because there's a hedge around him. That's the blood of Jesus Christ. And when God looks at Jim, he sees his son's blood. That settles it all. The argument's over. But God, I can tell you about Frankie. I can tell you this. I can tell you that. I can tell you that year and this year and that year. God said, tell me all you want. Try to prove all you want. It'll prove itself when I walk in and look at him. He says, "My, I see my son's blood. There's nothing you've ever done, son, that hasn't been washed in the blood of the lamb. He has no record of it. He goes back to Ben. Chato, he says, I, well, what a horrible past. But my, is it washed in the blood. All I can see is my son's blood. And he just moves on. What's he looking for this morning is his son's blood. The enemy of our soul, the enemy of the church, wants to make a horrendous move on your life and against the church when he can find it out from under the blood. That's when he wants to make his greatest move. Is when they're dancing around the golden calf. Church, this is why it's so important to daily and continually keep the blood applied to everything we have. Mind, body, house, car, finances, children. And church, we must have faith and trust in that blood. That what we have applied...
I cannot see it. But I can trust it. I'm washed in the blood. I just stay in this house. The blood covers me. He decides he wants to take me home. Home ain't a bad deal. I've been trying to get there all my life. But if not, you can't kill me. Shoot at me. Throw arrows at me. Fire a double barrel shotgun. Throw every spear, every knife you want. I'll just stand here covered by the blood. I can't see the blood. I trust it. Do you realize, I'm getting ready to close, but do you realize how many of you precious women in this church would have already been the harm or the abuse of some kind of heinous crime of rape and trouble that you could never dream of? But because of the blood? Brother Earl, that's so true. So true. I don't know, Brother Jim, if we realize how powerful this blood is and has been in our life. I don't know, Brother Robert, how many times they had it planned to take you out, to smear you off this map. But because of the blood, the enemy failed miserably. I don't know why. We were on a plane Friday morning, getting ready to airlift to head to Atlanta. The captain come on and said, for some reason they're stopping this plane. And they said, 60 seconds ago, it could have left the ground, but one minute later it can't. Everybody get off the plane and go back into the airport. Ended up, I had to spend another day in Florida. They canceled the flight. Had to get another car. Had to re-rent my room. One thing I've learned in trusting this blood. If I could have got in the air, Bill, that plane might have come down. And you wouldn't have had a pastor this morning. I don't know. I just know this. I can trust. I can trust this blood. I want to encourage you. Every day of your life, morning, noon, and night, don't you get up and leave the house or go to bed at night without, if it's your husband, your wife, or you're a single person, you begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your mind, your body, your house, your cars, your finances. Your children that are under an age of accountability, uh, plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them and send them off to school and trust God with them. I don't care where they're at on this planet. They're not safe without the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't care if it's Timbuktu, Arkansas, or in the busiest city of New York. You're not safe without the blood of Jesus Christ. And I close with this. If you're here today, you're not under this blood. You, you once were, but you have willfully stepped out. And you're set here in this service, not covered by the blood. Don't leave this church without coming by way of this altar. Getting that blood applied to your life. Saints of God, I don't want to spend the whole day trying to convince you. If you're not under the blood, Satan can take you any time he wants. He's got a loaded gun. It's loaded, the hammer's cocked, and he'll follow you. And he'll toy with your passions and your emotions. You'll get away with a lot of things. Why don't you just have a beer? Why don't you just have two? Why don't you have three? Tonight's the night we have the big fight in the home. Go get drunk, prove her, and teach her a good lesson so I can pull this trigger and put you in hell and then mock you for eternity. There is no future in hell. It's only the past. There is nothing but a future washed in the blood, covered by the blood. I have eternity looking me in the face. 
But a man that dies in his sin, all he can do is be reminded every hour for 24-7 for billions of years, you're a fool. I talked you out from under that blood. Bow your heads. Father, you said when I see the blood, I would pass. God, I know that Old Testament was a type of that precious lamb without a blemish. That lamb that was slain, what a type of Christ. What a picture of Jesus, the spotless, unblemished lamb that took my sin on Calvary. I do not have to go to hell. I do not have to die out from under the blood. I do not have to go to bed or live out from under the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, don't let one person leave here without coming by way of this altar. I know the time is serious. It's a critical moment in the history of this nation. And our president would root mouth off about a police department and call them stupid. Then call them in and have a beer with all of them. How pathetic has our White House become? How pathetic has the church become when it's a question mark of whether if you speak in tongues, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost or not? My God, help us. My God, help us. The convicting power of your spirits here. And if there's someone here, Heavenly Father, out from under the blood, draw them by your spirit this morning. Would you stand across this building? I've preached a sobering thought or message. He said, when I see the blood, there's not a question whether I could determine, Darren, whether you're saved or not. God determines that. The proof is, when God looks at Darren, he sees his son's blood. Are you here this morning? And you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you're not under the blood. A man said to me just the other day, a man that I've known and known in church. He said, Brother Downs, I hope I'm saved. No, no, you don't hope you're saved. Anthony, I know I'm saved. You know why? The blood has been applied to this life. And if there's a question mark in my life, I cry out again, Oh God, if there's a question mark in Duke Downs' life, I'm asking you to reveal and remove by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. As they begin to sing, the Spirit of God's dealt with you. He's drawing you. Come to Jesus this morning. I said, come to Jesus this morning. Get the blood applied to your life once again. Leave here with a confidence, with an assurance. Not that you're threatening anything or anybody, but that you know that you know the blood's been applied. As they sing it, God bless you as you come.